Hey, what's up, guys? Hard Leg Joe here, coming at you with the What a Deck profile for episode 164, Crystron Advantage 2018 edition. For a monster lineup, we're playing three Crystron Solfefnir, three Crystron Rosenix, three Crystron Thystvern, three Mathematician, three Crystron Smiger, three Scrap Recycler, three Crystron Praesordal, and three Crystron Citri. For spells, we have one Foolish Burial, three Called by the Grave, two Twin Twisters, and two Pot of Acquisitiveness. For traps, we have two Lost Wind, three Crystron Impact, and three Solemn Strike. Our extra deck consists of three Crystron Quandax, two Black Rose Dragon, and one each of Quarion Gondrax, Trishula, White Aura Whale, Samurai Destroyer, Black Rose Moonlight Dragon, Powered Insectatron, Crystron Amatrix, Clifford Genius, Mistar Boy, and Lamphor Syncarus. The side deck, I'll go over it a little bit. So first of all, let me start by stating the obvious. This deck is not using the Crystron Link Monster. This is because, at the time of recording, there is no announced release date for that card in the TCG. And like most of my decks, I wanted this build to be something that my American and European audience members can build right now in real life. So with that said, this is an advantage deck, which means it's all about gaining as many resources as you can while destroying your opponent's resources. We accomplish this second part mostly through a toolbox of synchro monsters that can remove multiple resources from your opponent. In particular, we have Quarion Gandrax, which banishes up to three monsters from your opponent's field or grave when summoned. Trishula, which banishes one card from your opponent's hand, field, and graveyard when summoned. White Aura Whale, which destroys all attack position monsters your opponent controls when summoned. And Black Rose Dragon, which just flat out destroys every card on the field, including itself, when it's summoned. Now what makes these monsters particularly potent in this deck is that we'll be summoning them during the opponent's turn, usually when they're in the middle of trying to build up their board, preventing them from establishing anything that might be able to negate our plays. We accomplish this via the Crystron engine. If you're unfamiliar with them, they can be a little complicated. Uh, all the non-tuner monsters, except for Solfefnir, uh, share the same common effect text, which says, Target one face-up card you control, destroy it, and if you do, summon a Crystron Tuner from your deck. But you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except for machine-type synchro monsters. The one tuner we're playing is Citri. Citri says during your opponent's main or battle phase, you could target one non-tuner in your graveyard, special summon it with its effects negated, and then immediately synchro summon a machine-type monster using just it and Citri by banishing them. In most cases, you'll be using Citri's effect to summon the level 2 Praesordal in order to make the level 4 Crystron Quandrax. This is a synchro tuner that says once per chain, during your opponent's main or battle phase, you can synchro summon one monster using this card and other monsters you control. It's Quandrax that allows us to summon non-machine monsters like Black Rose, White Aura, and Trishula. Of course, in order to do that, you're going to need other monsters on the field, and that's where our final Crystron comes in. So Fefnir is a level 5 machine that says, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can discard one Crystron, except a copy of itself, special summon this card in defense position, and then destroy one card you control. In addition, if this card on the field is destroyed, you can summon one Crystron from your deck in defense position. This is how you get more than one monster on the field. Typically what you'll do is discard a Crystron to summon this, destroy itself with its own effect, and that will let you summon the Turtle from the deck. The Turtle can then destroy itself in order to summon Citri. From there, you just normal summon any of our level 3 monsters, and you'll be set up to Black Rose on your opponent's turn. So your Citri is on the field, so you can use the Turtle in the grave to make Quandrax, which can then sync with the level 3 you just summoned, in order to make Black Rose, or any other level 7 Synchro for that matter. If you normal summon your level 4 Crystron instead of one of your level 3 monsters, then you can make White Aura Whale. If you want to make Trishula or Quarian Gondrax, which both require 3 monsters, then you'll need a little help from Crystron Impact. This is a trap that lets you summon a banished Crystron, while also turning the defense of all your opponent's monsters to zero for some reason. Now, Trish and Quarion are both level 9, so if you do the Selfefnir combo I just mentioned a moment ago, 
normal summon a level 3. You'll just need a level 2 monster to bring things from 7 to 9. Fortunately, making Quandrax as part of that standard combo will banish both Citri and Praezordal, which are both level 2. Trishula requires one tuner and two non-tuners, so by summoning back your turtle, you'll fill the requirements. Your Crystron boss monster, meanwhile, requires two tuners and one non-tuner, so you can just summon back Citri instead if you want to make it. Now, regardless of what you're making, it'll take a lot of resources, and if you go for Black Rose, it'll wipe your entire field. Fortunately, Crystrons have additional effects that make recovery pretty easy. I already mentioned how Solfefnir can summon itself from the graveyard so you can use it every turn, but the rest of your non-tuners also have graveyard effects that activate by banishing themselves. Rosenix can summon a level 1 token with zero attack and defense. Thystfern can search any Crystron monster except itself. Smiger searches any Crystron spell trap. And Praezordal allows you to special summon a Crystron from your hand. Now, the turtle effect isn't all that important, but the other three are great. The tokens created by Rosenix can be used as both synchro and link material, and obviously adding spell traps and monsters to your hand helps you set up for next turn and maintain advantage. Perhaps more important than the recovery, though, these effects help the deck be more consistent. Remember that our main combo is Solfefnir, any Crystron, and a level 3 monster that you can normal summon. Mathematician and Scrap Recycler are both level 3 monsters that let you dump a monster from your deck to the graveyard when they're normal summoned. So, you summon either of them, dump Thystvern into the graveyard, banish it in order to search Solfefnir, and then there's two of your three combo pieces in place. You have a level 3 on the field and Thystvern in hand. All you need then is a Crystron to discard for Solfefnir's effect, and if you discard Smiger, then you can banish it in order to search your Crystron trap, and that'll give you everything you need to make either of your two level 9s. As for the rest of the deck, well, Foolish is there just to dump whatever Crystron you need into the grave, and the rest are tech slots. Uh, Called by the Grave is pretty much just a staple for any deck that needs its normal summon, and Crystron's is no exception, stopping hand traps that would prevent your Mathematician or your Scrap Recycler from going off. Twin Twisters and Lost Wind are there to deal with spell traps and monster effects, respectively. Twisters I chose because it lets you discard Crystrons to the grave, and Lost Wind I picked because even if you nuke your own field, it comes back from the grave if your opponent recovers. I'm playing them both at 2 just because I play singles on YGO Pro, so I need to be prepared for a wide variety of decks. If you're playing this in real life, though, you'll probably want to max out on whichever is most relevant for the meta you're playing, and put the extra copies into the side deck in case you go up against something unexpected. Pot of Acquisitiveness is a bit of recovery. It lets you shuffle three banished cards into the deck and draw a card. We only have the three tuners, and they always banish themselves. And since this is a long, grindy deck designed around synchro summons, it helps to have this. You can put your tuners back into the deck and continue to summon them out for your plays. Our last card, Solemn Strike, is just my personal preference. It doesn't have any particular synergy with the deck, but it's good for dealing with things like Cyber Dragon Infinity that will negate your Synchro Summons and shut you down. If you want, though, you could just as easily replace this with Kaijus, which serve essentially the same purpose. Uh, Magnet Force is pretty decent. It protects all your machine monsters from all your opponent's monster effects for an entire turn. Or you could add Evenly Matched, which is just another board wipe to add to this deck's arsenal of board wipes. And of course, if you want more consistency, you can always just replace them with another copy of Twin Twisters or Lost Wind. Our final remaining cards here are just a couple alternate options. Uh, Moray of Greed and Iron Draw are both decent draw power for this deck, but both of them have their problems. Moray is only good on the first turn, since you'll rarely have two monsters in your hand after that. Uh, Iron Draw, meanwhile, is kind of a win harder card, since it only lets you draw when you have two machine monsters on the field, and that only happens if you already have your combo with Solfefnir and a Crystron. Uh, I found it was better to just max out on Mathematician to make sure that you get that combo, than to be able to draw more when you already open with the combo, but your results may vary. Our final two cards, Supply Squad and Starlight Junction, both great synergistic cards that I used in the previous version of this deck, but since they're a continuous spell and a field spell respectively, I find that they fail in this version because of how often you use Black Rose Dragon. You'll just wipe the field, and then you won't be able to use them. 
If you want to focus less on field nukes there and more on some of these other extra deck options, because there's a whole bunch of stuff that Crystrons can make, uh, these are both great options that can easily fit in place of any of your tech slots. And with that, there's the deck. I hope you enjoy it. Crystron's definitely one of my favorite archetypes. If you'd like to see it in action, you can check out the main video there. I'll be playing 10 random duels against opponents on YGO Pro, showing off how it plays. Or if you're short on time, just check out the replay video. Both should be on the end card and linked down in the description. Anyway, until next time, good luck and have fun. Mm -hmm.